So for milestone three, as you see, uh, due date is going to be the 29th. That is uh, uh, nine days, uh, uh, ten days, nine days since ten days since it was published, um, and nine or ten days, I don't know. Uh, and uh, um, uh, let's uh, go to. Oh, there we go. These are the workloads. So. There were some typos that the other class actually pointed, and I ask you to please take a look at it to see if there is any typos or anything. I'll fix it. Um, but uh, milestone three is where you actually start uh, writing the first engine of the POS, the, po the point of sale that we have. Uh, for this part of the um, uh, project, you only need the error class. So you don't need the POS app. You don't need the date. So you can set them aside. Uh, error is the only thing that you need to do. Here, what you're going to do, the very first thing you're going to do is uh, um, adding these constant values to your, to your uh, uh, pos.h. The constant values over here is so y if you are printing error messages in different places for the same thing, uh, your error messages actually match. Okay, so we have constant messages like that and uh, set them to constants. So constant character array, and then set the, set the values to these, uh, so you can reuse the the, diff, uh, the constant values wherever you want to show an error message instead of actually typing it. So we're not going to have any uh, typed uh, uh, difference in uh, uh, when you're in your sub in your submission. So uh, the very first thing you are going to create is an interface. Now the interface we said it's a class that has only pure virtual functions, and that's the only thing you need to have in it, okay? So the class uh, POSIO um, is for all the objects in the point of sale system that is readable and writable on the console and file. So um, you are creating a write and a read and a save and load. So write and read uh, are uh, pure virtual functions that uh, receive an O stream. So write receives a, a I stream and returns I stream. Uh, o stream and returns O stream, read uh, ex uh, does it from the um, I stream and uh, returns the same thing. Save uh, uh, return uh, receives O F stream and returns O F stream instead of uh, just O stream. And load um, the same thing I F stream and O F stream. So um, you. Uh, implement this pure ritual functions, which essentially are four prototypes with equal to zero in front of them. Um, and uh, make sure you add a pure, uh, uh, an empty virtual destructor to this too. You know, we have to add a destructor to so make sure that there is no memory leak. So you do that, you add the, the destructor to it. Uh, then after that, you overload the insertion and extraction for those four things. So the four things that we have up there, each one will have a helper function so it can be inserted into a C in or extracted from, uh, inserted into C out and extracted from C in or uh, inserted into a file and extracted from a file. So you do four um, helper operator overloads. The code of those go to the uh, uh, dot cpp file of POSIO. If we didn't have those things, we didn't need a cpp file for the interface because interface only has pure virtual functions. So that's that one. Um, this should not take you, including reading and doing it for like 15 minutes of your time because it's just standard. Everything's standard. We have done it so many times that so there is no need for it. Um, the abstract class, item abstract class over here, this is an abstract class too, which means it will have one pure virtual function in it. Therefore, it is still not a concrete class. It's an abstract class. And um, uh, the private attributes that you need for an item in the POS system is the SKU. You have the, the length that it's supposed to be. Uh, name uh, is a dynamically allocated uh, uh, C string uh, up to max uh, name length. I just received a question from somebody asking that, um, how is it dynamic and it has a maximum name? Having dynamic and maximum length are 
com two different complete things has nothing to do with each other. It means if the name is longer than certain thing, it's not acceptable. It doesn't mean that you can't do it dynamically. It has to be dynamic, which means, but if they enter it more, uh, the, the characters they enter is more than certain thing, then you're not going to accept it. It's a, it's a validation process. But it is held in the item dynamically, and that's the only dynamic thing that item has. Price is a double value, tax is a Boolean value, um, quantity is uh, an integer value, and the display type uh, is uh, um, um, an integer value that uh, corresponds to the flag that we have up here. So these two flags that you see that I ask you to add, POS list and POS form, essentially when you are inserting your item on console, there are two ways that it can be seen on a monitor. Either it's like a form way that it uh, uh, shows the, everything in a form fashion, or you can have it linear so you put them back to back and it creates a list. So if you want the item to get printed at list, uh, the flag should be set to POS list. If you want the item to be displayed as a form, you set the flag to POS form. <coughs> so those are the uh, those are the uh, attributes that we have, private attributes that we have. You have one protected attribute that is a, an error object. So you keep an error object as a protected value of item that keeps the status of the item. So if I, anything goes wrong with the item, you set the error to the proper message that we listed at, at the top. Um, and that's that. Uh, so if error uh, object is false, it means your object is in a good state. If error object is true, it means your object is in a bad state. Okay? Uh, and if it's uh, true, it means if you print it, it's going to print the error message that it has in its belly. So that's how the error message works. You have only one default constructor that sets it to an empty state. You have to apply rule of three, which means item has to be, should be able to be copied and assigned to another item with no memory leak. And also, you need to have a, a destructor. You do a member operator overload, which means uh, 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 for, uh, for uh, uh, comparison, which checks the two SKUs. If the two SKUs are identical, it returns true. If not, it returns false. Operator greater than. Uh, compares uh, the name of one uh, uh, item to the other one and returns greater if uh, it comes later in dictionary. Let's put it that way. Okay? So ABC is smaller than BCD. Okay? And you can use it with string compare. It's a no-brainer. These are the two things, minimum things that you need. If your code in future needs more than these, by all means, you can add anything you want. It's a very open-ended project. You can set not equal operator if, you, if your logic wants it. You can do less than, greater than, equal. Whatever you want to do, do it. Okay, these are the minimum things that are needed to make my program run the way I want. If you need anything more, by all means, add it. Operator plus equal adds the quantity. If it passes cert the, the amount of the maximum amount that we can have our stock, it will set it to the POS quantity there. Minus equal reduces the quantity. If the quantity goes below zero as a result of that, then it's going to again uh, set it up to the POS uh, error POS stock, which means um, it's uh, below, uh, below zero. Uh, the Boolean type conversion. Uh, literally uh, returns the opposite status of error. So if the item is checked as a condition, it is true if the error is false, if there is no error. And it is false if true, uh, error is true, it means there is an error. So that's a simple thing again. Uh, the helper plus equal operator uh, allows your code to have it double as a left-hand operand. And it adds the total uh, uh, worth of the items in the store, which is the cost multiplied by quantity. So if I have 10 items and each one is 
uh, if I have 100 items and each one is $10, if uh, uh, there is no tax, then it, the, it's going to be 10 multiplied by uh, 100, that's 1,000. If it is plus tax, then it's going to be $10.13 multiplied by 100, and that's going to be that. So it essentially returns the cost multiplied by quantity queries. And if you click on it, it's, it shows over there what it is, so cost query and quantity query. Uh, now, member functions, so that's the helper function that you're going to do. And remember, you are not allowed to use any friends of any kind, human friends or uh, method friends. None of them you're allowed to use. So no friends in this project, okay? Of course, you can use a friend, human friend, if you cite it. Citing is fine, but yeah. Anyways, uh, cost, uh, so cost and query. So cost returns the cost of the item which is essentially how much uh, is the price after tax. If uh, the item is not taxed, it's just the price. And quantity returns the quantity, so we know it. The clear method essentially calls the clear of error. Okay, it, it clears the error. Okay, so when you clear the item, the error will be clear. <coughs> Now, input and output operations over here. So four pure, uh, uh, the four pure virtual methods that we, that we have, you have to implement them here. So write and read and save and load are uh, written over here. The write uh, writes in list manner like this if POS list mode is, is the mode of the system, of the, of the, of the item. So if items uh, uh, flag for uh, type of display is list, you print it like this, which is going to be SKU, name, price, if it's taxed or not, quantity, and uh, uh, that's the, what is the last one? Uh, the last one is total. Is it? Yeah, total price. So um, what you need to do over here is that uh, uh, when you're actually printing the values over here, you have to make sure that uh, uh, if the name is greater than 20, you uh, only show the first 20. For the rest of the uh, formats, just count and see what it is and do it that way. All right. Uh, I didn't mention the field names over here. What is it? Everybody think things in? So I'm going to put the, uh, the I think I, I mentioned it somewhere. So I'm going to put the name of the fields over here in the right so we know exactly what it is. So that's something that I'm going to add. Uh, the name, if uh, longer 20, you do that. Oh, if the tax is, if it's taxed, you put an X over there. If it's no tax, there is nothing. Uh, and uh, no new lines are after. Okay, so after you print this thing, no new line is going to go go get printed afterwards. If POS is in form mode, then you print it like this. So you put the name, and first you put the silly stuff over here with a V over there, and then you put the names and the SKU price and the cost and uh, the quantity, and um, that's that. So, uh, uh, and if the name, you don't uh, truncate the name over here, so you can just print the name as is, and the rest goes. And you print a new line at the end when it's done. So. That's the right. Obviously, if the item is in an error state, you don't print anything. You just print the error. So you just uh, insert the error into OStream, and because error holds the message and you already programmed it, automatically the error message will be displayed. OK, whatever is wrong with the thing, it's going to be displayed. Uh, and at the end, you return an OStream. Save saves the data uh, into a file in a comma-separated way which uh, uh, is as follows. So the very first thing that is printed over here is what we call item type. Item type is the pure virtual method that you have to create over here. Did I mention it over there? I thought I mentioned it. Anyway, it's, it's, it's somewhere. I'll, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at it. So. You are going to have a pure virtual uh, uh, 
function that is called item type. Item type uh, is the type of the item that you have. Because we still don't know what is the type of this, and we have to later on decide if it's a perishable item, non-perishable item, depending on what it is, it gives a signature for the type. So in future implementations of item, when we inherit the, the, the concrete classes, perishable and non-perishable, out of this one, in that one, it's going to be implemented. For now, it's a pure virtual function, and it returns a character. So whatever the item type is supposed, supposed to return in future, first you print that one. In my tester, I inherited a tool, so as if I am having a tool shop, and I want to use uh, my item to sell tools. If that's the case, I created a class called tool, and I implemented the item type to return a T, a capital T. Therefore, the first thing you print is this value, and then comma, you go with the rest of the information, all comma separated, you put them all, and, and that's it, okay? So that's the save method. <coughs> Read always receives it at, in, a, in a form format, as you see. So it tells what is the SKU. You enter name, print, price, and everything is entered like this. This is a utopian type of data entry. Read is a foolproof data entry, which means if somebody comes into read function, they have to enter the proper information and go out. There is no other way, OK? They have to enter everything correctly. So what they do, they come in. If SKU is incorrect, you're going to print the proper message and ask for them until they enter the proper thing, and everything's going to be done like that. The execution sample shows the worst case scenario that everything goes wrong. So, um, <clears throat> so you will see that. So you get the information, and you set it. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, after it's done, you return the, the I stream. So that's when you are actually uh, uh, extracting inf information from C in. Load, however, is uh, getting information from uh, uh, IF stream, which is uh, getting the information from the file. And uh, it uh, uh, reads all the values in a comma-separated format from the, from the entry. And as it reads it, uh, it first it, it goes through everything from top to bottom. So it does uh, uh, a read from top to bottom and goes through everything. Okay, reads everything. And if uh, the reading is successful, with C in is uh, uh, sorry, if stream is not in an error state, then it validates everything and saves it. That's all it does. Um, and uh, if the I stream goes bad, then it's bad and uh, it means the data file is uh, not read properly, and obviously, the user can detect it. Uh, <clears throat> finally, we have one function called build print, and build print does a special type of printing. This doesn't have a helper function associated with it. This is only used when you want to print the bill for the customer. So it needs very limited amount of information, which is only the name, truncated obviously, and <clears throat> the cost. If it's uh, uh, taxed, obviously it's going to include the tax. If it's not taxed, it's not it's not going to include the tax. And in here, if the if it, if the item is taxed, you have a T. Otherwise, you don't have anything. <coughs> uh, the tester program is here. If you take a look at it, you'll see what I mean when I was talking about. Um, it's going to do the worst case scenario. So as you see. <coughs> I am having a class tool, public item. That's what, to be able to test it, I have to convert it to a concrete class. And the only thing that it had pure virtual was item type. So I'm creating a tool out of item, and I'm going to say the item type returns T. There you go. Now it's a concrete item object. OK? And then, <coughs> um, as you see over here, these are all the things that I test, one by one. I go through the bottom. Now, let me just show it to you. It's easier. <clears throat> so um, yeah, so it, it tests all these things to make sure everything is OK. And uh, let me just demonstrate that, because the other class, uh, when I did something, they were pretty surprised that they have never done that. So um, do not enter the information manually, people. OK, don't do that. I, I list everything over there so you can simply copy and paste. And that's what you need to do. So. Let me bring up the 
<coughs> sorry, bring up the, um, the tester. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so this is how it runs. So I say enter the following. Do not enter those things manually. Just double click on it and right click and right click. And it pastes it right down there. Double click, right click, right click on Windows. On matrix, you just double click and you do right click and paste it automatically. You don't need to do the right click twice. So on Windows, you do two right clicks. On matrix, on party, you do one right click. So you don't type it. So, and then you hit enter. So that's, that's it. So that's uh, SKU tool on. Again, double click, right click, right click. It's down there. Now this is a very long one. You cannot double click, so you highlight it. And right click, right click, there you go. So don't type these things. I put them over there for you so you can easily enter it. So you do one by one. And chisel. That's that one. These are all the bad cases that are supposed to happen. It tests all the things that are supposed to be foolproof. Oh, that's wrong. And finally, and you hit enter, and it goes through all the tests. So it tests everything as you see. So that's, and that's why we are doing it like this. So for milestone three, you do all these tests. When you go to milestone five, everything's going to be entered correctly. You're not going to have any error validation tested over there because you submit this one. If you submit this one, it means your code is already working for all the uh, validations. <clears throat> there were some uh, typos that I fixed. So, um, and please check uh, if there is anything, let me know. And um, that's how everything ends. That's, that's, the, uh, that's how the program works. Uh, so you have the... You have the main over here, and you have the correct output. You have the correct output light over here. And in nine days, it will be done. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, and uh, we'll go through whatever is needed. So that's the correct output right over there. And that's milestone three. Milestone three takes nine days. Milestone four is going to be a very small one. It takes, I, I put four days for it, because you're just creating two classes out of item. And a very simple Im implementation, it's not much to do, okay? So you will see. Um, and milestone five is the one that you are integrating everything to do the POS. <clears throat> Any questions? Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, there's no problem. There's no problem. Even for citation, you don't need cite milestone 1, 2, 3, or 4 because they are not marked based on the code. If you want a code review, you book an appointment, and, and I'll go through the code, and I'll tell you what, to, what is good and what is bad. I'll give you a, a kind of a hint. So it's just they are just marked on their timely uh, submission. Milestone 5 is the one that will go through the code and we mark it, actually. And because of that, you, all the, so people keep telling me, I forgot to cite Milestone 1, I forgot to cite Milestone 2. You don't need to cite those. The only thing that you need to cite is Milestone 5, where you have, maybe you got something from somebody in Milestone 2 to be able to submit it, but then afterwards you found a better way or you rewrote it yourself. You don't need to cite it. Okay, so now milestone number five is the one that the code has to be yours, and if it's not, you have to cite it, okay? Or any other change, I will change it. So I'm going to tell you over here in milestone two, we did this, you have to add it to it. So everything will change. I cannot give you the whole thing. It's very possible that something, when I'm actually doing milestone four, I see, oops, milestone three is, this thing doesn't good work properly for this. This has to change, so you will get that. And that's milestone three. <clears throat>
Uh, questions? Anything else? All right.